What is up, everybody? Welcome to Yankee Football. Today, we're going to be talking about the U.S. Men's National Team game versus Honduras, the World Cup qualifier that just finished. And I feel like we're going to have some opinions in this video that pisses some people off. I mean, that happens every video, but this one for sure, because oh, the U.S. Definitely. came away. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Like, I, can't, I cannot wait. U.S. wins 3 nothing. I personally, not to, not to be negative, Nancy, I don't think I've ever been this unimpressed from a 3 no win in my entire life. It was a dub, but it was a like a very small lowercase W. Like, not a big yeah. one, not one that I would write home about. And I bet all of our media outlets are going to say, like, oh wow, the gosh. U.S. overcame adversity after a tough defeat in Canada, and they played their hearts out in Minnesota in this really cold weather. It was a trash game. It was a trash game. It if, should have been that, eight goals up. Nine. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. This this is going to be one of those games where if you didn't watch, you're going to check in. You're going to be like, we're back, baby. Like, mm -hmm. U.S. going to Qatar. We're making it to the semis. Uh -huh. No. If you actually watch this, I mean, I'll just tell everybody, you called me before the game was over and was like, do you just want to start recording now? Because... There was nothing to really talk yeah. about. It was just complete, utter U.S. domination in terms of possession, but not doing anything dangerous with it at all. Um, I don't know. Did, did you feel the same? Did you think that creatively and going forward we were better? I'd say overall it was boys versus men out there. You know, I, I mean, we were playing their practice squad. It looked like, honestly, I am shocked – that Honduras even squad. made it to this level, you know, like how did they beat out like some of the other teams to make it like to this stage for the qualifiers, you know, like they were bad. Great question. How, why, how is Trinidad and Tobago not here? The yeah. fact that there are like some countries in CONCACAF that we've played before that didn't make it. I mean, how terrible are those teams if right. Honduras made it? I right. mean, Guatemala's not here. Trinidad and Tobago's not here. Those guys must be not even, like, Sunday League quality. Is yeah. this Honduran team... Is this Hon Okay, from the jump, I think everyone could tell they didn't want to be there. Oh, they hated They didn't it. even... Bro, they didn't even try. They weren't even sprinting half the game. No. <laughs> I, I've never... Also, I've never seen a national team be completely gassed by the 50th minute. Like, halftime just ended. You got a 15-minute break... And somehow you're exhausted five minutes in. It didn't make any sense. It's got to be the cold, right? I mean, like, how many times do they play in that kind of cold? No. I guess. What, what do you think about the cold? Okay, because it's getting presented as, like, this advantage for the U.S. When it's two degrees negative with the wind chill, do you think that's that's legitimately a benefit for us? Um, I think it is because I think some of our players, you know, they – well, I would say the majority now play in Europe where they do experience colder climates. I think the only guy on Honduras that plays in Europe is Ilis, Ellis, their, their striker. That and guy he, plays in Europe? Yeah, he plays for the French League. He plays oh. for like Bordeaux or something like that. Okay, Res respect that. I had to look him up because he was, <laughs> he would run all over the pitch and he was like, on their back third, you know, like defending when he was the yeah. striker. So, so I was like, huh. So this guy actually must must care for some reason. But um, yeah, I think I mean, uh, the rest of his teammates surely did not. We, yeah, we can say that. I mean, it's it's one question to ask, why the hell are they playing in Minnesota in February? Like, this is another example. Play in the fucking South yeah. during the winter, like. It's obviously going to be a little warmer, yeah. Here and um, I, I, I mean, I don't. Dude, I think it's like seventy degrees outside right now. Yeah, yeah. It's hot, dude. Yeah, and like I'm wearing that... shorts and t-shirts, still sweating. Yeah, exactly. And that aspect, like, okay, sure, but to the point of your original question, what if um, the U.S. have an advantage with the cold? I mean, I don't think so. I'd like like I was saying earlier, you know, some of them have probably experienced the cold like that. They either grew up in it 
or they play in it overseas or they play in it here, I guess. But I mean, it's it's to both teams' detriment. I feel like it, it, it it's yeah. a negative to both teams. I mean, both of them look cold, you know, like physically cold. Yeah, I've never seen players play with their entire face covered before. Yeah, Have you I've, ever yeah, seen that? No, I've never seen that. That was crazy, dude. Weston McKinney looked like Anakin Skywalker out there. I was like, what is going on? I can't even tell who has the ball. Like, even the players were warming up. It was like it was zooming in on their faces. And their noses are like bright red. They're looking like Rudolph. Everyone's like obviously incredibly uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. I saw some little sidebar pop up, some overlay, and it was like, well, they're drinking apple cider to stay warm. I was like, ain't no apple cider keeping somebody warm in this. I'm like, bro, it's two degrees. Yeah. Like, I, I think if it's like, if it's a 30 degree game, then I think you could make the argument that it's like, okay, it's cold enough to where the Hondurans are uncomfortable, but still warm enough to where we can play. We can play ball. I don't think anybody's really accustomed to two degrees. You know, no. it's like, if you, if you, okay, if you go swimming in the, in like a lake that's frozen, it might not be as bad every single time you jump in that frozen lake. It's still freezing though. Like no one is just like, hey man, this is warm now. I've done it so many times. No, it was miserable forever. I feel like that's one of those things that just never really gets better. So I, I don't know. I don't know. And, and I also feel like it's kind of a, a weird thing to say that we need to play Minnesota to be easily the worst team in this group yes yeah they they are definitely not easily they are the worst team in this group yeah by a mile i would argue i mean jamaica have been pretty bad as well Mm -hmm. el salvador aren't really anything to write home about but this honduran side wow i had a list of positives from the game um i'd be curious to hear what some of your positive takeaways are my number one is that Number one, we played Honduras. That's the number one positive. If there was ever a team that you need to play after getting spanked by Canada to nothing, it's the Hondurans. Why? Because they don't have any quality anywhere on the pitch. I mean, Ellis is probably their only guy who looks like he could do anything at any moment. Um, We were never threatened the whole game. Shit, we probably could have played the U-17 squad and we still would have come away with a nil-nil draw at worst. Any, any like, confidence builder, anybody who was like, man, coach, I need a good game. Like, I'm really down on myself. But like, well, we got the Hondurans uh, coming up in um, Minnesota. So I'll, I'll start you for this game. Right. I mean, just abysmal. I don't want to just drag the Honduran national team for 20 minutes, but I feel like I could. There's enough to, there's enough to say there about how awful this team is. Um, but, yeah, so that, that was my number one positive. Number two, and I'm sure you would agree with this, U.S. completely dominated possession. Um, I think I saw the stat at halftime. We had like 76% mm-hmm. possession or something like that. And I don't even know how many. I don't think Honduras ever had a touch in our box the whole game. I didn't see one. Did you see one? I thought they had one in the first half. Oh, maybe. I might have missed that one. Maybe they had one touch, but it was it was, it was, was minimal. Um, number three, I thought Kellen Acosta... His set pieces were pretty fire today. Yeah. And we talked about that in the Canada game. We were like, okay, we got Pulisic taking the corners, taking the free kicks. And nothing's really happening here. And then Acosta comes in, and we score three goals off three of his set pieces. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that was a good shift. It was a good shift. But I don't know if it's enough for him to start playing regularly, you know, because Tyler Adams is – Number one, right? I don't yeah. know if Acosta jumps in there just because the man is cold with the set pieces. You know what I mean? I don't know. Do you think that there's a chance that he he starts moving forward? The only way I could see him starting moving forward, which th- this was going to be one of my negative points, but I'll bring it up now, are over-reliance on aerial balls yeah is insane like yeah i get we're probably on average taller than the hondurans but when we play someone who's actually taller than us on average that is never gonna work yeah and even in a game 
that is possession dominant, like you said, you know, 76% or whatever, we're still doing like crosses and lobs when we could easily, yeah. you know, just, uh, just string a few passes together and get inside the box for a shot. Yeah. But they're still There's, crossing. Yeah. They're still, I, I, I mean, I don't understand. This is the perfect time to, you know, like you said, build confidence and maybe try out a different tactic that we might have to use in Qatar. Cause not every, I, I mean, once, once another team, uh, like an actual competent team sees us cross twice, Shit, you think Germany's going to let us cross more than twice when they see that? Shit, let's not even talk about letting us cross, dude. How many crosses do we have that doesn't even clear the first man? Yeah. I saw Anthony Robinson has the lowest cross completion rate of any fullback in qualifying. It's like really? 5% or something like that. Holy. It is awful. It is awful. And Serginho Dest, his delivery is okay on its day. But Reggie Cannon today, I mean, you already busted out some of the negatives. I'll bust out some of the negatives. His distribution is trash. Yeah. He literally could not beat his defender with any pass. Every single one of that man's crosses just deflected off a Honduran guy and went out for a throw-in. So it's not even like, is it going to work against the Germans? It's like, okay, well, is the ball going to clear the German fullback and actually end up in the box right. and then we still have to score over you know guys like Sule and guys who are you know six five so it's just not gonna work and that's yeah. the problem with Greg Ball is it's like no matter who we're playing no matter if there's another viable strategy it's like you said let's just trebuchet balls into the box for 90 minutes and pray to God something happens it, yeah it's it's very I, I feel it's the old historical American style of soccer you know, and, and I thought we had moved past that with Klinsman. You know, I think he started not doing that, but I guess we're back to it. You know, which which is weird because yeah, this is... is this is probably our most technically sound team, I would argue, ever. Yeah, I would argue ever, despite their youth, still. Yeah. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest worries that people like us have going in Qatar. It's like, okay, great. We beat Honduras. Bro, anybody would beat Honduras. Mm -hmm. Anybody would beat Honduras right now. They are not a good team. So, and it's, it is kind of sad. Like, honestly, it, it kind of feels like this is the first time this strategy has worked. And it didn't even work off from open play. It was all set pieces. Yeah. But this whole, like, bomb aerial bombardment finally works against a team that is so bad they couldn't sniff the World Cup. This is not going to work against the Uruguay back line or any team that has any organization and defenders over 5'10". Mm -hmm. It's just not going to happen. Walker Zimmerman today won every single aerial duel because he's 6 inches, 40 pounds bigger than the biggest Honduran on the field. Yep. Every single set piece he won or at least deflected or, or caused so much havoc that three Hondurans had to mark him just to get the ball off him, and that's when we scored. That's when Pulisic got the tap in. Mm -hmm. So, how do, how do you feel Pulisic did today? I know he came on as a sub for Jordan Morris, but I'm interested to hear your, your thoughts on the shift he put in. Well, one, I don't think he should have been subbed on at all. Why not? It's Honduras. You know, Too risky, like he could get injured? too risky and i mean i feel this round of qualifiers i mean he's been pretty shite he's he, he's been underwhelming um <laughs> he's been ass i Let's think just call it like it is he's been ass he's been ass and i saw online that they which i don't think i've ever seen this before or if i did i forgot they've been calling him they've been calling him a a pull shit not pull sitch pull a shit Wow, and I think he he was Christian pull of shit tonight. You know, he had a very scrappy goal, but I mean, it's Honduras. It, it, it was like FIFA, where like you're changing players and you're like spamming uh, slide tackle, and like all yeah. the guys are on the ground. Like that's yeah. how he scored the goal. You know, yeah, it, it was nothing to write home about. If that gets scored on you in FIFA, like you quit the game. Yeah. You're like, no, 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 man. I hit X three times to clear the ball. Like, I'm out. Yeah. It was... You think he was shit? I don't think he was shit. 
I don't think he did much, but I also don't really think he tried that hard. I mean, like he was a non-factor. Was he like, did he like whiff a couple chances? I don't think so. I'd call him shit if he did a bad job. Like if he should have scored three times and he just, just well, completely skied it. We should have scored a lot more. Yeah. In in my opinion. And if you're gonna tout the nickname Captain America, then I damn expect you to put every fucking chance that you have at least on target in the back of the net. Yeah. This this whole window is raising a really good question about Pulisic because it's like, oh, yeah, Chelsea man won the Champions League. Well, he ain't playing now. And it's obvious. You know, the injuries have obviously taken away some of his, probably his confidence. I mean, I know coming back from an injury, I don't want to get slide tackled again and, and go right back on the bench or in the mm-hmm. medical booth. Um, and he looks rusty. He looks really rusty. And so I think you and I and, and you know, Connor, for a future episode of the Yankee Football Podcast, which if you want to see that and you're listening on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe this video. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss that. It will be mm-hmm. on Spotify and Apple Music as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, quick plug. I think we should discuss that um, pretty soon, whether he needs to leave, because that's a genuine question right now. And I don't want to go into it because let's keep the focus on today's game. But yep. every every single game this qualifier, I, when I've been watching Pulisic, I look at it and I'm like, I think it's time. But what, what like I said, we'll get into that later. Yep. Um, I'm curious how the media is going to take his performance. Because again, if you just check the box score, oh, wow, Pulisic came on. He scored five minutes later. Oh, they're going to say he America. did great. Yeah. yeah. I can, like I can see the headline now. Like, is has Pulisic cemented himself as goat? And I'm like, yeah. oh, fucking hell. And and then there's gonna be a Landon Donovan quote stating like, this guy has the right to my wife or something. Yeah, exactly. And then Clint Dempsey's gonna be like, I just stepped down from the Hall of Fame so that Pulisic could step in and, and yeah. take my place. Exactly. He's that good because he he was really good when he was 17. Um. Do you have any more positives? I, I know we've like kind of like <laughs> diverted into something completely different, but I really only had the three. I mean, I'll sum it up. We played Honduras. We dominated the ball, and Kellen Acosta was good. One of my I don't positives, really have too much else. Um, was uh, which I had never seen him play before for the U.S. Was Luca De La Torre? Uh, mm-hmm. He he Fans have been calling for him for a while. He was he looked pretty sharp. I I did some googling. I did some googling during the game because he looked he looked very calm and collected. And mm-hmm. I he might have had like one or two misplaced passes, but he was pretty solid. Um, I think he plays in. It's like a smaller Euro League. Is it Switzerland or something? I thought it was Netherlands. It might be. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. He plays in the Eredivisie. Yeah. 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 Um, does. But yeah, he he was a bright point. I, I I would be interested to see what he can do moving forward for mm. for the national team, and, and I guess for club level. I I mean, I think he starts all of his games for whatever club he plays for. I think he's won several uh, individual awards over there, like player awards yeah. and, and whatnot. You know what's hilarious is watching Luca De La Torre today. I was like, wow, this would have been nice to bring off the bench against Canada. Somebody that would have been nice. Yeah. can dribble. But no, I don't even remember who we brought on. But I was so distraught at the time. I think I blacked out halfway through the second half. Um, I agree with you. I think De La Torre was a bright spot. I will say, and I'm pretty sure this is nerve, so I'm not saying like he's a bust or anything, but he did look a bit nervous and some of his decision making was very slow. Like there was that one counter attack that sticks in my head where he had Pulisic wide open to mm-hmm. his left, and he just takes like two touches too many. And he did that a couple times in the first half too. He would he would have Wea out wide. He would kind of look at him, take like a touch, look down, look at him again, take another touch, and then play to him. But by that point, the counter attack has already slowed down so bad that. You know, it's not a counterattack anymore. The Hondurans have already gotten back and they've set up their low block. Um, yeah. So, look, he won. It, and also, it's freezing cold. So, we can't, like, I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, he's he's a bust or anything. I think he absolutely deserves playing time in the next game. I think he should start our next qualifier. 
um, which is against Mexico in the Azteca. So that will be very, very mm-hmm. interesting. I don't think he will start because we're probably going to bring our, our best squad. Because yep. if the U.S. can get a draw there or a win, then we're in. Yeah, we're in. That's cool. um, so De La Torre will probably not play that game. But I think he, I think he did have a solid game. I agree with you. Um, any other any negatives that you have about the game? My one other positive was I thought Weston McKinney, absolute start. He needs to start every game if he's healthy. I think he's our best player right now. He's our most consistent, which indisputably. Is what we need. Yeah, like also the guy the no he wins more headers than anybody else. I mean the guy could have gone to the NBA if he did not play yeah. soccer because his hops are ridiculous. No, he he gets it and he's got a good work rate and. Yeah, I mean, he he's solid. Yeah, and he doesn't make too many bad decisions. He does, you know, turn it over sometimes in bad positions. But I think he's been our best player this window. Mm-hmm. Um, easily. Yeah, easily. Um, I thought Walker Zimmerman though was really good today as well. He did look good. I I, I I don't know if he's good enough to start, but good backup. I mean. I think you know who I think should start on the back line uh, in the center. So, Enlighten me. You wouldn't be talking about Jonathan, would you? Mr. Brooks. Mr. Mr. Brooks. Brooks. Well, you did. I don't know if you saw, but Richards, I I don't know if he broke his foot or something with his foot. He out for for a hot minute, um, which sucks because he's probably going to miss the Mexico game. And in fact, he's probably going to miss the whole next window. So... Does this force Burhalter to call John Brooks up? I don't nah, know. He's just going to start Zimmerman the whole time. He, he he doesn't like Brooks, right? I have no idea what's going on there. It seemed like they had a bust up like a while ago it's, when John Brooks got subbed off and weird. Greg Burhalter has like never brought him back. I don't know. I don't trust anything that man says. I mean, the man said that we dominated in the Canada Canada game. He also said there's no bad blood within with John Brooks, and the only reason he didn't get called up is because he's not playing well. In Germany, it like, I just he also said Zardes was really good against Canada. I just don't trust anything the man yeah. says because, yeah, he's just like I don't know. I was gonna say a salesman, but I don't know what he's selling. I'm not interested. Um, so, what are your negatives? We kind of went over some. Um, you know, so we I, talked about, I talked Greg about Reggie Ball. Cannon. Yeah, we talked, yeah, we talked about, about Greg Ball, Reggie uh, Cannon. I, I think Sergio Dest has to start at right back. I mean, oh, it has yeah. to be him or Yedlin, I feel. It, I think they were just giving Dest a breather. Probably. Um, a negative. We had a lot of misplaced passes. Like, they weren't doing they. They, meaning Honduras... We're not pressuring whatsoever, and we were still kicking balls. Bro, they were down three nothing, bounds. still sitting nine behind the ball. I've yeah. never seen that in my life. A yeah. team that's already eliminated from the World Cup, they have nothing to lose. They're down three nothing, and they're like, "Man, we're tired. We're just gonna sit back." It's yeah. incredible. This is honestly, generally the worst opponent I think I've ever seen in a while. Yeah. No. No. Like I. They had no tactics. Like, it, it was literally just like survive. <laughs> yeah, which they they didn't even do. What dude? Their coach, their manager's gone. I feel. I mean, these guys, these boys on my chest right here, they're putting six past them today, minimum. Oh, easily, easily. I mean, they cooking up in Asia. I think they. I think they qualified. I think. They did, I think they right. uh, South Korea qualified today. They were, so. they were the. They're the first Asian team to qualify. No, Iran's the first Asian team. Are we going to make the they're argument the that they're Asian? They're in the Asian I mean, they're in the same table. Yes, they're in the Asian <sighs> We're going to argue about geography. Oh, let's, yeah, let's not argue geography. They do play each other, so that's... They do. Okay. I feel like that... Never mind. I'm not going to get into that. We're not going to get into a regional dispute now. Um, point is, Honduras was ass. Um... And yeah, and despite them being ass, like you said, there was a lot of uh, sloppiness. And and I uh, part of that is probably the pitch and the cold and the fact that it's frozen turf. I've never played on frozen turf. Have you? No. 
Sounds awful. I played on wet turf. Yeah, wet wet turf is bad enough. Frozen turf sounds like what the hell is going on. Um, so we do have to, you know, give the boys some credit for that. But I don't know. I don't know. What would you grade their performance? Give 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 me a letter grade. I'd say B minus. Are you fucking kidding me? Is that high? No, that's exactly what I gave them. Oh my god! See, this I'm is looking why at my notes Connor. right here. We're we're way. Yeah. <laughs> Connor would be like, "That was an A plus." Um, I mean, we won the game. Yeah. Automatic A plus. Um, <laughs> you got to be kidding me! I was like, "Ah, right, he probably gonna come with a B. I'll go a little lower. B minus. God damn it! I I feel like people are. I feel like people are gonna disagree with us." I feel like people are going to say, like, nah, man, we were so good. Honduras didn't pose any threat. But I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, you think it's a B- minus because of the nature of the win in the circumstances against the opponent that it was. It should have been more. It should have been more, and it should have been a lot cleaner. Like, if they if they tried to do this against Panama, you know, someone mid-table who is fighting for their lives trying to get into the World Cup, I mean, mm-hmm. it, it probably would have been either a draw or like a draw at 1-1, or we might have scraped a win by at 2-1, you know? But they definitely would have scored on us. No way. Yeah. Yeah. If we do this in, in Panama City, we're getting touched. Yeah. I mean, we did get touched. We lost that game. Um, yeah, it's just... There's something about beating an awful team off three free kicks that they did a horrendous job clearing... That it just like leaves a bad taste in my mouth. And I always feel guilty when one of my teams wins this way. Because I'm like, I should be happy. But I'm thinking about, like you said, what happens when we go play the Germans? What happens when we go play any South American team? Mm -hmm. Dude, what happens when we go play Japan? Iran? I mean, like, this is not going to work against these teams. It's just like CONCACAF. I feel like it creates this bubble where we get this false sense of security. And I feel like this happens to the Mexicans a lot, too. It's like... They play a certain way because the teams are not good, and then when they try to apply it to a round of 16 game in the World Cup, it doesn't work, and then everyone's looking around like, what happened? Yeah. But we're not, you're not, and not every team is Honduras. Not every team is just, is ba- literally, they just gave us the ball, and we're like, please score. And we were like, all right, but we're going to take our time with it. I mean... We're going to get to know you first, you know, before I just slide in. You know what I'm saying? Right. That was exactly. pretty much what it was. Instead of, like, put that motherfucker in the guillotine and cut his head off. We should have yeah. had three in the first half. Yeah. No, I mean, we should have had a lot more, I think. And I've said that, I think, multiple times now. Like, like throughout the full 90 minutes, it should have been seven or eight. Yeah, it should have been, dude, it should have been minimum, absolute minimum four. And still I'd be like, I'm kind of sad. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to see on Twitter if there's anybody talking about. Uh, just like a lot of celebrations about getting the three points and like, let's everybody listening, don't get this confused. We're glad that we won. We're just concerned because we're we're trying to think longer term about this. We're not thinking about how do we beat... Honduras, we're thinking about the World Cup. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting. I'm, I'm really curious what, what the, the coverage is going to be. Alexi Lawless is hyped about the U.S. win. Interesting. Okay. Well, anyways. One final question I did want to ask you. Um, what do you think about Ricardo Pepe? I thought he's... I think he's in his own head. I think he's trying really hard to score a goal, you know, after his Augsburg move. And it's just not coming. And, you know, I can appreciate a guy, especially on our U.S. team, you know, that is willing to shoot from anywhere. But he really mm-hmm. will try to shoot from anywhere. And his body is always contorted. He's always, like, flat-footed or, like, nearly falling over every time that he tries to shoot. And I... yeah. He needs to be, I I think he just, he needs to get out of his own head, 
like I said, it, it's just like an all like a mental thing. Do you think? Do you think he even is the best forward for us with how we're trying to play? With Greg Ball, no. Yeah, I think I he's a good. I think he's a good forward and striker with ground possession and counters. Yeah. But if we're going to do this cross shit, I, I mean, fuck it. Just just put McKinney up there, <laughs> right? <laughs> That'll never happen. They'll never put McKinney up there. But I do wonder if – I feel like with the type of ball we're trying to play, I feel like Daryl DK is probably the best guy for us to – to put up there, I mean, I'm yeah, thinking like just, aerial superiority. It ain't Josh Sargent with Norwich uh-uh. and Ricardo Pepe. I, look, I'll admit I didn't watch him in FC Dallas, so if he's an animal in the air, correct us, comment down below. But for the national team, I ain't seen shit in the air yet. Mm-hmm. He looks like a great striker, like you said. If it's more direct offense, but Greg Ball, I'm just like again, and he's he's kind of skinny. He's a little frail. I just see him getting bullied by some center backs. I mean, dude, he got he, like even against the Canadian center backs, like they're bigger dudes. You're mm-hmm. not just going to push them around and they're going to fall on the ground. Yeah, he got like the pushed. Honduran center back. I think he's like 39 years old, Figueroa. They were saying like he was a professional before like who was before somebody was born. I don't know who it was, <laughs> but I was like that is insane. It might have been Brendan Aronson when he subbed on. Yeah. But you're not going to play a 39-year-old 6-foot tall center back who, who's looking forward to retirement. And he still couldn't win anything in the air against those guys. I know. So I'm, I'm looking at Ricardo Pepe, and I feel like he's almost a man doomed to fail in the situation that he's in. Because I feel like even that if he does well at Augsburg, yeah. he's going to come here, he's not going to score, and then all the American casuals like us are going to be like, he's shite. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. And no, that's an you... interesting point. I, I, I think it'll be... He's a good player. Currently doesn't fit in this style of play that they're trying to go for. And I think that they're being told to play. So what do you think the solution is there? And like, do you think when the World Cup rolls around, should he be in the starting eleven? I'm going to be honest, I haven't seen enough of him with the national team to make that decision. I my gut feeling is is that he's good enough to make the full roster, maybe not start, but I think he should definitely be involved. Yeah. Um I think DK would be a good asset up top whenever he's healthy again. But I I mean Maybe we go like two strikers up top. Two up top, maybe. You know, because our our I main crosses that. come from kind of our fullbacks or our wingbacks. I feel like most of the time. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's gonna be interesting because usually, usually the strategy plays to the strength of the personnel that you have. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's not what's happening with the U.S. Because our quality of crossing is not particularly good. We don't really have a just... We don't have like a Chris Wood or somebody who's just a freak in the air who's going to win at, at minimum two or three headers a game and give you some chances that way. And so we have a lot of guys like, I mean, even sometimes I don't even know if like Tim Way is utilized in the best way, but I feel like some guys are going to get left out based on how Burhalter is, is trying to play instead of tailoring the strategy to what we have available in the national pool, which is a little frustrating. And right. he's not going to change. I mean, he's been, he's basically been warming us up for this moment since he got hired for this World Cup. He's not going to, in the last window of World Cup qualifying, be like, yeah, guys, we've been playing this way the whole time in a 4-3-3, but now yeah, we're, we're going to go three at the direct. back. Yeah. 
yeah, no. That's like we're, this is it. This is how we're going to look in the World Cup. Hopefully, it's a little cleaner. God, God help us. Um, is there anything else that you want to say? I mean, I, I want to ask you who you thought the man of the match was, and I, I say we call it. I mean, closing thoughts. I mean, it was a win, but like I said earlier in the when we were talking, it was it's a small dub, small dub. Yeah, it's like lowercase three point font, not even italicized. I mean, it is a, and it has an asterisk next to it. Yeah, that says against Honduras. Yeah, exactly. Gosh, um, still. Important three points, depending on how Mexico does. And they're playing right now, I believe, against Panama. I'm about to go watch that game, actually. Um, hoping for a Mexico win. Um, these three points were important for us they qualifying were. for the World Cup. And like I said, we kick off. I don't know if we kick off the next round away in Mexico, but I know we do travel to the Azteca at some point. That'll be That's going to be tough. That's going to be tough. So we will definitely be doing another video about that game. Another post-game analysis of that whenever it is i think they're in march but i, I really mm. don't know um i'd have to check the calendar if you guys want to see that and you're watching on youtube make sure you hit the subscribe button we're gonna go ahead and sign off here you let us know in the comments what do you think we both gave the u.s a b minus for the performance in this game do you think that's harsh you guys let us know we appreciate you guys for watching as always follow us over on twitter at Yank Football Pod, we're trying to get to 30, 30 followers over there. Mm -hmm. So we need we need y'all's help. We would love to get to three hundred subscribers at the end of this video. I think we need like nine now or something. So that'd be an excellent Valentine's Day gift to us. Early, of course, if you could go ahead and do that. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see y'all in the next video.